Next up is the governor profile, and the governor profile takes you in here and just shows you who who the owner is of the team and what they uh, is important to them. Ideally, what you want to do if you're kind of immersing yourself into your My MBA is to kind of focus on the things that are important to the owner. Now, there is a setting that you can put in here and turn on that will allow you to get fired by the governor if you do a poor job. And uh, if we get to it here, I'll show you where that setting is. But you know, if you want to come in here, just have a, a look at the governor and see exactly, okay, what is the gov what's important to the governor here? Well, he it really wants a good team image. He is not as involved. He is, uh, you know, he, he's concerned about morale of the team. Money, not so much. So this gives you an idea of what you might be able to do within the constraints of your owner, so to speak. So uh, that's your, your governor profile. Now here's the finances. Now I like the, the finances. You've got the team budget. This tells you where you can allocate <clears throat> your budget. Uh, you can auto allocate it down at the bottom. You can hit a button to do that. There's no money here. You know, we could change some of this and add some of it to here. Um, you know, you've got player payroll, staff payroll, arena operations, team operations, promotions. Maybe you'll want to stick some money in promotions to kind of get fan interest up. And so that is something that you could do. Uh, but this is where you would do that at. Now, also in here under finances, you've got the team finances. And this is the balance sheet of what's going on in the league. So you can see the profit or loss right now uh, is like, you know, they've lost $40 um, uh, million dollars there. The bank account's in the red. So financially, the Pistons are in sad shape. So you could make that a goal that, hey, your job is to come in and, and as the GM, you're going to clean up the balance sheet and see what you can do. Uh, so also in here in the front office uh, under the finances, you've got the salary cap breakdown. Now, this is an important feature because in order to sign players, you know, you got to have money to do that. So if you're going to go into an offseason, you know, you need to be thinking about clearing cap space. And here you can see you go in and like here, this number here, the salary cap room is $64 million. I've got $64 million to work with here in the upcoming offseason. Here I've got $130 million. And as you sign players, that will that'll take away from some of this um, here. And you got I got some dead cap space. These are players that might have been released. The money still counts against the cap, even though they're not really on the team anymore. You can look at the cap space for all the play, all the teams in here and see who has cap space, who doesn't. You know, let's have a look at the Warriors. They're probably over the cap. So you can see, yeah, they're, they don't have any cap room. They're over the luxury tax. Uh, so one thing I wish these guys would do that make 2K is they put everybody so we can see them. There's, there's a lot of room up here above this uh, screen at the top where they could make it so we could see all the cap without having to like scroll down. But whoever does these screens, they don't, I don't think they use the game and they, they don't think the way that I do. But I'd really love to be able to see all of the players without having to scroll. <laughs> I just find that ridiculous. I got to do that. And the other thing here, I got to go back to this menu every time. But anyway, go back to finances. Uh, we got the pricing. You can go in, you can set tickets for the uh, the gate and parking, uh, you got merchandise, concessions, um, and so you can also get a feel for, okay, people feel like it's a good value, so that might be a good opportunity for you to raise ticket prices. Um, so uh, those are some things you can do with pricing. Uh, you can also go in here and look at the pricing graphs. Um, you can go in game by game and see, you know, or you can view by season. Uh, I'm not sure this is 100% working correctly this year. It didn't seem to vary much. It was just a straight line across in some of the sims I've done. Uh, and that's one thing you'll notice about uh, my MBA is, you know, initially they'll come out, there might be some things that don't work, and then they'll report those, and then they'll get those corrected. But you got merchandise, you got concessions, you got gate. And so you can kind of get a, a good picture of how, well, where can I make money at here? So back to the front office and to the finances. Uh, you've also got jersey sales. You can see Giannis with the Bucks. He's sold the most jerseys. You hear Victor uh, Wimby. He's got, you know, he's he's a new player. A lot of people are buying his jersey. You know, you can make it a goal to get one of your guys, you know, as the top-selling jersey in the league. I've never done that, but that would be something that I'd like to see happen at some point. Um, and it's nice that it's in there. 
Uh, also under finances, uh, okay, that's all of the finances. All right, next up we got team relocation. You can choose a city where you want to go. These are all the available cities. Um, you know, I don't, I haven't typically moved a team from one uh, location to another, but you can see here, you know, you can move to, uh, like here, let's see, uh, there's, uh, we could go to Vancouver again, we could go to Seattle, so if you want to put your team in Seattle, you know, there's lots of things that you can do here in terms of relocation. Let me go back to team relocation, team branding, you can go in here, you can change all of this stuff. I know one year I took my My League and I changed all the teams, all the team names, all the arena floors, the the uniforms. I had all logos and everything. But just realize if you do that, uh, once you start changing too much, then you're going to have to have the 2K servers. And then uh, once those servers shut off, then you won't have that customization anymore. So a good tip for you is, is if you want to have your My NBA for years and years and years, I'm still playing NBA 2K19 with a My League because I, it doesn't require the servers. And so I don't do a lot of customization because of that, because I don't want to have to rely on the servers in order to continue my, my file. So that's something that um, is important to me, because if you get into a good my NBA My League file and you're having fun with it, the last thing you want to do is, is, is stop play, playing it. And if, uh, the, you know, if you have to stop playing it because the server shut down, that's something that you could uh, get away. Now, you can also go... Um, in here and you can design the arena. Um, you can go in here and you can design, I hate how these menus work. You can go into the uniform, you can design the uniforms. And I had a lot of fun when I designed all the uniforms. And I know there's guys, I um, can't remember the guy's name now, some guys do a lot of stuff in this regard, going in and changing uniforms, changing courts. There's people that have made like college teams uh, it's it's crazy what people have done uh, that they give you allow, the opportunity to to uh, to customize. Uh, you can this is where you can kind of find some of these designs. So you can go under download team designs. Like a big popular one is the Sonics. A lot of people love that. Uh, so that you know people have created these things, and then you can have your own designs that you can save here and that you can upload for other people uh, to use. So uh, those are the uh, relocation options. You also got league expansion. You can expand the team. There's uh, you can expand the teams in the NBA from 30 teams to 36. Uh, you can build your own team. You know, using the designers and stuff that we talked about. You can use a pre-built team, and then you can download your design um, into your league. So uh, the pre-built teams this year are the Barons. Um, then you've got the Force. You've got the Knights, uh, you got the Liberty, and you can see up here like it's the Louisville Liberty. You got the Cincinnati Lions. I've been using the Cincinnati Lions in my NBA 2K19 series, so not a lot of new stuff here. They still have some of the old stuff. Uh, Vancouver Ravens, who I used back then, St. Louis Sound, Nashville Stars, Virginia Storm, San Diego Surf, uh, the Bronx Brawlers, Omaha Airmen. Honolulu Breeze, and then there's the Barons again. So uh, one of the reasons that I do like these pre-built teams is because if you're going to expand your your um, your league, you don't want to really use customized teams because then what? you got to rely on the servers. Here, if you use these teams, then uh, it's a situation where you don't necessarily have to rely on the servers, and you can expand the league without having to rely on the 2K servers for that. So uh, lots of features there as far as uh, expansion goes. And uh, I think, yeah, so that's all of the expansion stuff. All right, next up is the coaching settings here. And within the coaching settings, you've got a lot of different things that you can do. The first is, first is the coach game plan. Now you can set game plans for all teams. Um, you can set uh, a global game plan. Now typically I will set a global game plan uh, I can set the roster, you know, who's going to play, how deep we're going to go into the roster. You can you can change these rotations. Uh, you can go into the rotation timeline that's in here, and you can even get more uh, deeper into how the rotations work and when you want players to come in. Um, you can 
also uh, change the uh, coaching settings. Uh, typically, I like to have run plays frequency up because I usually run on auto play calling a lot of times. Uh, I usually like to, to set my bench depth up. I like to use bench, bench utilization. I usually put that uh, um, up. And then the line performance factor, I usually elevate that to like 100 because I like to have my guys. Uh, I usually let the coach decide on subs when I'm actually playing my games. And then I like the coach to like keep people in there that are hot, that are playing well. And it's, you know, using some of these settings, you can do that. Uh, they also have some sim points of emphasis here. So these are things when you don't play games, kind of how the team's going to play. And, uh, you know, they've got different uh, ways that you can have uh, emphasized during the game. You can see whether there's any injuries. Now, the global game plan doesn't have one thing that the individual team game plan does, and that's these defensive settings. And so if you want to go in here and you change these defensive settings, you can do them from a team perspective. Uh, you can do them from, you know, specific to each player. And, uh, you know, so you can really go in here and, and set up a game plan specific to each team. Uh, or you can just use the global game plan. But again, the global game plan, you don't have these player-specific defensive setting options. Now, you may want to use those. I know from time to time I use them. Typically, I've been a default player where I don't like to use these settings. I've found that if you can score, and then basically your defense is going to step up. And where you run into problems is when you can't score, well, then your defensive settings are going to break down. Uh, defensive settings can kind of help you overcome poor play sometimes because your settings will kind of help you. Uh, but you have the option to go in there. You can set your matchups. And again, you can set uh, the coaching settings, the points of emphasis. Uh, the thing about this here is, is that if you do set up a global game plan uh, or a, a team-specific game plan, you'll want to go in there and take a look at it before each game with that team because players get hurt, the rosters change, you may not have somebody that's playing, they may not have somebody that's playing. So you really, before you play each game, you ought to go in and check your game plan. Also in here, you got the conditional coaching. I haven't used this yet, uh, but you can create one. I like create simple, uh, you know, like garbage time. Uh, that would be a good one, you know, because sometimes I've been playing, and I'm way up, and then because of my rotation minutes set up, uh, you know, then they'll sub in my starters who really don't need to be in the game, and then I'm always kind of worried that they'll get hurt. So you can uh, you can set up some of those uh, items as well as well. Uh, also in coaching, uh, you got system proficiency here, and so this was what I was talking about earlier when you know you want to find players that match a system. So uh, to really kind of think through your my NBA, you would want to say, okay, what what kind of system? What kind of system do I want my team to have? Do I want them to be a, a run and gun team? Do I want them to be a defensive oriented team? And then you want to bring in a, a coach that, that supports that kind of system. And then you want to bring in players that support that system as well and have uh, the same mindset throughout. Now you can still win regardless if the system matches up or not. You know, a lot of this stuff uh, is more, does it matter a little bit? Is it the whole does it matter over anything else? No. I mean, good players are going to be able to play in whatever system uh, that they play in. Now, you can see here this is the active system because there's a little green checkbox there. But like perimeter-centric, you can see there's no green box there. I could, I could change it if I want. And you can see here that this is really the best system for these players here is the pace and space. Uh, I think there was one other that was close. But this is kind of how you want to use system proficiency. <clears throat> you could change the players in here and see, you know, how they would fit into uh, the system uh, if they were put into the lineup. Also in coaching, you've got on-the-fly lineups. <clears throat> so you can set up a bench rotation. So if you want to bring your bench in, you can set up a tall lineup, a quick lineup, uh, defense, three-point, free throw. You know, like at the end of the game, if, you know, uh, you know they're going to foul, you can, you know, bring in your free throw lineup. Uh, if you want to set up a custom lineup uh, for some other reason, you could do that too. I've got a video on some of these items uh, from past generations of NBA 2K, <clears throat> but you can set up your on-the-fly lineups. You can edit your playbook, and so in here you've got uh, the plays that are in your playbook. Uh, you can also assign types of plays to each player 
and you can see what plays are assigned to them. You can replace plays in your playbook, and you can get all sorts of plays from isolation, pick and roll. Uh, there's a whole litany of plays that you can choose here. And as you gain experience with the game, you learn more and more about these plays. And this becomes even more important if you're playing the games. You're going to be wanting to go in here and say, okay, how can I get the most out of my players? What plays work for my players? And you'll do what I've done probably, and I practice the plays, and I figure out, okay, I really like this play. And then you'll get even more experience and go, well, in this situation, I'm going to use this play because I see how the defense is playing. And uh, it's, you know, a really nice feature of the game because there's lots of plays in the game. If, if you're not using plays or freelance motions and play art, I encourage you to do it because uh, if you're playing the games and you're just freelancing, you know, you're just one-on-one -on -one and all the time, uh, basketball is meant to move the ball around the court, and you can do that with plays. Also in coaching uh, are the coach settings. I usually go in here and uh, the adaptive coach engine, sometimes I just put that on defense. Um, I have to look and see how that's going to work this year. I usually leave my timeouts on auto. I put my player minutes usually to uh, auto substitution. I usually put that on auto. The method I usually like to use is rotation uh, from my coach game plan. Uh, offensive play vision, I usually like to have that on. I like to have it at full so I can see the play art. Uh, I typically don't put the play messages on because I don't like to see the little pop-up come up. Um, I don't like people to see what plays I'm calling, but you can try. So I usually have that off. Offensive play calling, I usually turn that on uh, to auto, so the coach calls plays. And if you put that slider up close to 100 on, uh, you know, that was in the the coach settings, uh, then you know, then the coach will call a play for you all all the time, and that helps you become more familiar with the plays, uh, so that you don't have to. So initially, you might want to run with play calling messages on, so. When a play is called, you'll know what it is, and that way if you need to find it in your playbook, you can. I usually leave defensive play calling manual because I like uh, uh, to play man-to-man -man defense the whole time. I usually leave late game fouling uh, on auto. I usually turn team communication uh, on offense and defense. There's other items in here. I'll have to review some of these uh, to see, but you've got freelance uh, options and teammate cut to basket. So these are things that uh, a general overview of some of the coach settings that you can set up. Also in coach settings, you got practice. You can go into freestyle practice mode and you can go in here and you can practice with the players and see how they dunk. And uh, you know, what I like to do when I'm in here is I like to go in and I look at the options and then I can look at uh, the controls and I can go, okay, well, how do I dribble? Well, here is an in and out move. Here's a hezzy. You know, so I and then I can whatever these moves are, then I can, you know, I can practice these in uh, here without playing the game. So, and then I can practice my shooting. Make sure I got my shot release timing down. I can see where they like to shoot at by pressing the hot zones. Uh, so you can learn a lot about your players by taking them into freestyle practice mode. Uh, so I do spend a lot of time in freestyle practice mode. I also set my camera up a certain way. I've got to decide how I want to set it up for this particular 2K. Right now it's set up on 2K low, which isn't isn't a bad uh, setup. Uh, you can also go into, after you kind of practice individually, you can go into coaching and go into practice, and then you can go into scrimmage mode. I don't know why this year, but scrimmage mode look, looks kind of dark. And I'm going to turn it off because there's some music there. But you can run plays. You can play five on five. Uh, you can substitute players in both of these modes. So uh, you can choose sides. Uh, so uh, I go in here and I practice. Uh, I prefer to practice in games. I really like to learn in game situations. But there are times I'll go in and I'll practice, uh, particularly in freestyle practice mode. I'll use that a little bit more than I will um, the, the, the actual uh, the actual uh, scrimmage mode. You can also go in here and practice plays to get familiar with the plays. And then you can, you know, you can look at the play art and you can see the double screen coming here. I can pop the three. So those are uh, ways that you can learn, you know, you can go in here and, and do the different, um, you know, learn the different plays within. You can see the play 
call up there's 51 nine horns if I wanted to change the plays I could go in here I could change the defense and then I could also have it show me how to run the play so this gives me a good idea okay if I'm gonna run this play well what how does it work if the CPU runs it and then that give me a better idea of how to run it when I'm playing uh, but I found I don't spend as much time in practice plays uh, I like to learn in game mode more uh, but you know when I'm first learning plays, I mean, I've been playing 2K a lot, and a lot of these plays are the same as they've been for a little while. I don't necessarily have to spend a whole lot of time practicing plays like I used to when I first started. And so those are the coaching settings and the practice uh, section. Uh, so the next option is scouting. All right, so here's the scouting section. In the scouting section, you can see there's lots of different things. You have prospect scouting. So these are the fictional players that the, the game generated. You can see uh, all the players that are within uh, the draft class, so to speak. You can click X here and you can edit the prospect. You can load in another draft class. You can save this draft class and share it outside of your My League. So you can go in here. I know uh, what some guys have said they've done is like during the season, They'll go in here and, and they'll like edit this prospect and maybe they don't like this guy's name compared to the way he looks or nationality and you know maybe they don't like his tendencies. Maybe you want to go in here and you want to put a different, you know, you want to give him a headband. Um, you know, maybe you want to put different shoes on him. I mean, there are so many things that you can do um, that a lot of people spend a lot of time in here and this is one thing you can do with the prospects. Now, other thing in, in uh, the scouting mode is the draft board. You can put players that you're interested in here and rank them. That way, as you learn about players, you go, okay, well, this guy might be good at the power forward slot. This is somebody I want to keep my eye on. That way, when you get to the draft, you'll have all of the information kind of at your fingertips. And uh, also, there's mock drafts here to kind of let you know, okay, if you draft today, so I'm the Pistons here, and so currently, if uh, the season ended today, uh, my first pick, I, w I don't have a first round pick, it doesn't look like. Let's see, double check here. Yeah, I don't have first round pick. Do I have a, oh, this is, yeah, it only does first round. So I don't have a, I, evidently I don't have a first round pick either, that or I'm just not seeing it. But it kind of tells you, you know, if I was the Hawks, well, there's a good chance these guys here will probably be within my range, and those will be people that I might want to scout. Uh, because if I have the 14th, 15th pick, you know, I might want the number one pick, but I'm not going to get him, so what's the point in scouting that player? So if you know kind of where you're going to draft from as the season goes on, then you can kind of start, you know, targeting guys that you want to scout. Also in scouting are big boards. Uh, this kind of gives you, like, uh, these are different publications that rank the players and who they think are going to be, you know, number one, number two players, so on. So you can take a look at that and get more information about uh, each of the players. Also, um, let's go back to prospects here for a second. I can uh, also, uh, let me cancel this. I can go in here and I can click the player card and I can learn Okay, this is how this guy's ranked. Uh, I can learn he's a good on-ball defender. Uh, he's an elite second jump, could be a real weapon. I, he doesn't have any medical conditions, his stats. So once the uh, college stats start showing up, you know, uh, those will show up here. You can see how his stats are. You can see some of his attributes. You know, what you can see will sometimes be determined by how much scouting has been done. So you can see up there, he's only been scouted 39%. So they don't know his personality yet. They don't know some of his ratings, his tendencies, uh, or his badges. So that's the purpose of scouting, is to kind of find out these things. And if that said 100%, maybe you'd have a better picture of what um, that guy might be able to bring if you brought him to your team. Uh, the other thing in here is team intel. This is a really nice um, thing. You can go into each team, for example, and you remember earlier we were talking about the target list, uh, the people on the trade block, and the untouchables you can see here. Like I'm, This shows both uh, those Toronto players are on my target list uh, that I put uh, Ivy on the trade block, uh, that Cade Cunningham is untouchable, and these are the guys that are on expiring deals. So what a lot of times I'll do, I'll go in here and I go, okay, who's, who's shopping players? Uh, you know, 
who's they're not likely to trade Alex Gil, just Alexander here, so he's an untouchable. Uh, this tells me, you know, they're probably not going to trade him. Uh, you can also see that the team status says, like here, rebuilding. That can be changed to contending, buying, selling. Now, the CPU will change these for you, but I kind of recommend, and I, I did a post on Twitter about this, uh, you know, you can set these team statuses by taking control of each team, and then uh, it might be a little more realistic, you know, because some teams aren't necessarily labeled correctly. Um, and, you know, then the status here is what really drives the decision-making uh, that the franchise makes. So a team that's contending will make different decisions about their roster than somebody who's selling or rebuilding. And so uh, on Twitter, I did a post about how you would want to look at those team statuses and how you want to set them up for each team and how you want to keep, you know, keep an eye on them as your season goes on and kind of at least, you know, the beginning of each season. So that before the trade deadline, you know, people are kind of acting in their best interest. So you can go in and you can control all those things if you want. Also within uh, scouting, you've got player comparisons. You can compare players here. Uh, you've got, you know, sometimes I'll go in, I'll look at their grades, uh, their stats. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time in here, but you could go in here and you could look at a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, this is a good scouting report on this player too, because I could see, okay, where does he like to shoot on the floor? I don't know why this isn't in red anymore, it's in green, uh, but you can compare a lot of different things in player comparison. Uh, you can go into team comparison and do the same thing and look at the matchup and see you know, what the matchup looks like uh, between the two teams. Uh, you can also go in here to scouting and uh, look at team rivals. And team rivals, uh, you can see that the ones in red are teams that, you know, uh, the Pistons have a rivalry with there. So, like, you can see the Pacers there in red, the Bulls, um, you know, Cleveland. Those are all division rivals. Um, so, and you, you can see that the Hawks are kind of a, uh, a rival. Uh, so, you know, these rivalries that take place, the teams will kind of, supposedly, they'll get up for these games more, and it's different by team, you know, who considers who a rival. Uh, but when big games come along, uh, this will kind of dictate maybe how intense that game might be based on how big the rivalry might be. And so you can kind of, with a little creativity like I was talking about earlier, you can go, okay, hey, you know, I got a, I got a game coming up with the Pacers here. Uh, they're one of our rivals. We're really going to want to stick it to them because it's, it's, a, it's a division game in the Central Division. So you want to kind of keep that stuff in mind as you're playing through your My NBA. So that's the scouting part of it. Next up is training. And training, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can go in here. Uh, the prep hub can go in and you can do training schedules, individual training, coach game plan, coaching system. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these here. Just know that there's uh, some depth here and you can go in and you can set your training session up um, however you want. So here's a training schedule. You can go in, you can set it up. You know, here's three, works, three weeks worth of training. And ideally you'd want to keep in mind, okay, we've got a game here on this Monday against the Thunder. So we're not going to practice, obviously that, obviously that day. Maybe we'll have a film session. You know, like here, here's a film session, and they're not doing any, any workouts. It doesn't look like there. Uh, you can see when the games are. You can go in here, and you can, you know, tanker and, uh, you know, do a lot of different training. Now, I haven't done a lot of that, uh, but it is there. Uh, you can also mentor players. Like, you know, here's two point guards, and, you know, Cunningham's, you know, he's fairly new to the league. Monte Morris is a veteran. And some of these um, uh, badges here that he's got, he can mentor uh, and pass on to Cunningham. And so usually I'll set these up. You know, how well they work, I, you know, I can't really say. I mean, some of the stuff I think in 2K, it's on the screen and it, and it looks like, okay, this is cool. Does it work or not? How effective it is? All those things are kind of up in the air. And a lot of this could be, you know, even if it doesn't work, it's, it's something to just give you a little bit more uh, immersion in your league, you know, because veterans would help younger players. And you'd want to kind of, maybe you can even kind of create a storyline uh, in your league about stuff, stuff like that. Uh, back to training here. You know, you've got training schedule. We went through that. Uh, we've got the um, individual training. So you can go in, you can set uh, load management, the focus, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go into all those. 
the main thing I want you to know is you can go in and you can look at uh, their development, the training schedule, and you can tinker around in here and really go pretty deep. And obviously the staff behind the training would help too. Um, and you got your injury history here uh, for each player. You can go in. We don't have any injury history for this particular franchise. But anyway, that's the training. And then next up, you got the stats and the standings. I usually go in here and I like to look at the league leaders, see who uh, is, um, you know, leading in in different statistical categories. Uh, I'm trying to look here if this is by. Um, Okay, this is per game. Okay, so this is so Trey Young's leading the league in scoring. Uh, we've got Embiid leading the league in rebounds. Halliburton leading the league in assists. Uh, Tatum leading the league in steals. Uh, look at Robinson there, 3.7 blocks a game. So I like to go in here. I like to see who's leading the league currently in my fictional my league. You know, I'm leading the league in scoring with one of my players, and I got a guy that's like top five in assists. And so I like to pay attention to those kinds of things. Also in here, uh, you've got the G League stats. Uh, let me go back here. You got on the season stats. You've got leaders. You got player stats. You can go in and look at your guys. Is you know like here, he's averaging 31 minutes. Cunningham's the leading scorer on the team. You can look and see you know who's who's doing good, who's not, and try and figure out how to get more out of your players. In addition to player stats, you can look at the rookie report. So we can see here that. When Bignana, you know, he's averaging 24 points a game, eight rebounds, so he could be the top rookie right now, uh, according to this little ranking list he is. And then you've got Scoot Henderson here. You've got Chet Holmgren. Uh, so these guys, uh, you, know, you can kind of track them throughout the year and see uh, how they're doing and kind of get a feel for who might be rookie of uh, the, the year. you got team stats. Uh, I usually go in here and I see, okay, you know, um, what's you know how many games back? How, many, how am I doing in the in the standings? Uh, what kind of lead do I have in the standings? Usually there's a games back feature, uh, but I don't see it uh, right there. So that's because that's the ranking. That's not the standings. So and you got the analytics tool. I don't typically use the analytics tool. I've never used it. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you do use the analytics tool. And, uh, you know, how you use it, it's not something that I was going to um, work on here uh, today. And this is probably a little too deep for this. Uh, also in here, you've got uh, the G League stats. You can look at the G League leaders. Right now, the G League hasn't started yet because uh, it doesn't start right away. Uh, you got the NBA standings. Okay, here's where the game back is. So the Pistons right now, we're game back in the East. And so I, as the season goes on, you know, I like to look over who's hot, you know, and I can sort it and say, okay, the Hawks have won three games in a row. Look at the Heat. And they lost three straight. Uh, in my fictional My League series right now, I think the Cavs have lost like 16 straight or some obscene number like that. They've only won six games uh, all year, and we're like 50-some games into the season. So I, I usually will look there. I'll look at, um, you know, points per game, uh, points against to see, you know, how I'm faring. Uh, I like to look at home and road records to see how I do on the, on, at home and how I do on the road. Um, also, inside the standings, I like to uh, look at individual teams by, you know, clicking my right stick. And then uh, one thing I like to look in here is you can see there's some finance information. I like to look at social media to see if there's anything specific about that team that's popped up on social media. I like to look at uh, team comparisons sometimes, uh, I, but this is what I really like to look at. I like to look at their past games and see how they did. You know, they want how many. You know, maybe they're on a winning streak here. They won two of their last, you know, first first three games, and so that's helpful information when you're getting ready to prepare for an opponent. Uh, so you've got the power rankings. You can see the Pistons right now. Uh, the power rankings are pretty new. And so they're probably all the way down here close to the bottom because they were one of the worst teams in the league last year. And so as you perform better, you'll uh, go up in the rankings. And as you don't play as well, then you'll go down in the rankings. And I always kind of just glance at these to see how the power rankings shake out. It's not something I really focus on. Uh, you also have that with the GM. You can see here the Pistons GM. Go down here with the Pistons. 
And, okay, there, he's ranked 28th. The top GM in the league is the Sixers, Tyler Jamison. And uh, as you improve your team as GM, uh, then you'll move up the rankings just like your team will. Also in here, we've got uh, last year's standings. You can see the Pistons last year. I think they won, like, yeah, you know, 17 games, so they didn't win a lot of games last year. Uh, the last is the options. And under the options here, we've got the settings. There's lots of settings in here. you got the general settings. You know, this is what the simple setup was. Uh, you can go in here and, and you know, you can, you can set a lot of stuff to uh, auto. Like here I got everything set to manual. Stuff you don't want to do. Uh, maybe in another video I'll go through some of these settings. You know, if there's a expansion draft, how many players are protected? Is team chemistry on? Is rule changes, are those allowed? Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, including sliders like draft class, class quality, which sometimes people tinker with to kind of improve those draft classes that the game generates. Um, you know, the likelihood of injuries. You know, here we got injuries on. I like to have injuries on. Um, I do see in-game injuries. Uh, you know, a lot of people complain that there aren't in-game injuries, but I have seen them in the games that I've played. They aren't frequent. They don't happen all the time, but they do happen. I've seen them happen to both teams, my team and my opponent. Uh, there's also a slider for career-ending frequency. You've got gameplay. Uh, a lot of times I have this set on Hall of Fame. Since I just got the game, I got it set on Pro. Uh, don't let difficulty worry you too much. Start at a level like Pro and, and work your way up. Uh, you've got different sliders here for, you know, like here's chemistry difficulty. There are guys that put together sliders for these things. Uh, and, you know, how these sliders will work will just depend on how you play sometimes and, um, you know, what's going on in your file and a lot of other factors. Uh, you know, there's other simulation sliders in here uh, that you can set. Uh, you can manage the ticker. So those are some of the settings uh, there. So also in settings are, uh, you know, the team settings. These are the team features you can turn on and off. Uh, relationships, you know, we we're talking about that uh, for morale, for trust. Uh, there's team automation settings. You know, for example, if you don't want to manage your staff, you want to have uh, somebody manage your scouting, set the lineups. You can go in here and set all of these things. Um, you know, there, there's so many settings that I need to do a video just on settings, really. Uh, position, this is a nice feature because if you want to go in and have like a my career on uh, in a my MBA file instead of playing my career, you can come in here and you can um, choose a player lock player uh, instead of uh, playing. Um, you know, here it's disabled, but if I just wanted to play as Cunningham all the time, then it would sim when I'm not in, and uh, then I could just play a my career in my my MBA. I've done that. It's it's a lot of fun. A lot of people like to do that because they don't want to mess with the story <laughs> that's in my career, and so you can do that. Uh, you can also do player position lock, and you can play as the point guard, and maybe Cunningham's in the point guard, and maybe his backup is in. Then you would play as both of them. So you would always play point guard, no matter who played point guard. If you're gonna do it, uh, I prefer the player lock where you play as one specific player, and you kind of you know, use that guy for his whole career within my NBA. So this is a really nice feature. A lot of times people don't know that you can do this, uh, and it is uh, worth doing. Other settings in here that we've got, uh, you got gameplay settings. So you can see here I got the quarter length, um, you know, fatigue, game speed, file out, shot feedback, camera shake. There's, there's a whole slew of settings in here that you can set for gameplay. You've got... Um, the ticker, team selection, you can go in and say, okay, I want to take control of the Lakers, for example, and maybe I want to make, um, you know, LeBron untouchable. Well, now I control the Lakers, too. And uh, so I can go into the Lakers and I can make changes for the Lakers. So having 30 team control, sometimes people are really into that. I remember when I first started playing 2K and people were like, 30 team control, man, that's where it's at. I'd be like, wow, 30 team control. God, how do you ever do that? But as you get more familiar with this stuff, you can figure out, you know, okay, this is how this works. And, and I typically don't do 30 team control, but I do from time to time go in and control other teams for certain things. Also an option here uh, for, you know, you get 
your 2K beats, you, like I got my music turned off now, you can set your controller up. These are things that you have access to. You can tune the sliders for trades, contracts, progression, attributes. You know, a lot of times people control these a lot. You can go in and you can change the sliders for the gameplay. Uh, let's see, we got um, for trades and contracts, you know, that's something else. You can create a player in here uh, to put him in your league. You can use player DNA. Uh, so if you've created a player outside, you can bring him in and put him in uh, to a player maybe you've created and kind of copy one over. You can save your file. You can save as, uh, upload scenarios and do tutorials. I always recommend that you save your file um, before you do anything big. And then the other thing I recommend is that you have a backup file. So here I might want to change this and I'll save as, and there's my, my main file. Uh, and then I'll have a backup file here as well. And then I'll save it and then I'll operate. I'll have a primary file where that's where I play. And then after I play a game or do, uh, you know, a day or whatever it is that you're doing, then you save it in your backup and then you have two. And then if one file gets corrupted, then you still have your other file. Another way you can use a backup file uh, as well is if you, you know, you want to do something and you're not sure how to do it, you can save your main file and then save your backup file. Uh, that way you got a copy. And then you can go into your main file and you can try, you know, because free agency is one of those things where it's like, if you haven't done it a lot, it's kind of tricky. So you could save your file and then save a backup and then you can go through free agency and see how it works and if you make a mistake it's not such a big deal because then you still have your other file you go, you know like because sometimes it's easy to kind of screw up free agency so those are some of the options there uh, that you can take a look at all right so during the season you're going to be progressing through the season there's a few things that are important you're going to have the um, all-star weekend uh, the, I don't know where it is in here, but you're going to have the trade deadline. Uh, you're going to have the contract extension deadline. And then, of course, you're going to have to the end of the season. And then that's when the playoffs start. So during this time, you know, your record's going to change. Your chemistry is going to change. Your fan interest is going to go up and down. So is your profit. Uh, you can go in here. You can simulate. You know, if I want to simulate the whole season here and I can disable CPU trade offers. Um, so... Uh, you know, you can have this sim seasons. You can try things. Uh, a lot of times I would go in, I'd manually change those things, but as those messages pop up, just to kind of show you how you can sim a season here, you know, I will just kind of maybe let the CPU take care of some of those things. And so it does take a few minutes to kind of go through, and here you can, you can scout players. And this is where that prospect scouting and knowing where you're going to draft at is going to come into play. You can have the CPU always do uh, the scouting for you. Uh, here's a, a roster update because of a two-way contract. So I'm going to have the team go ahead and um, manage my G League decisions. Here is a roster change due to signing. So I'm going to have the CPU take care of that. Those are all things that you would do manually most of the time. or You want to at least take a look at it. Uh, a lot of times it's easy when you're going through your My MBA just to kind of let things kind of do on their own. You're like, oh, crap, I didn't believe that. I didn't think that would happen. Uh, so I try not to let the, the CPU handle things for me, particularly when it comes to rotations. I might have it handle things for me, you know, once, but not always. That way, if something happens, then it can pop up. Um, Another thing that I like to do, I'm going to stop the sim here, is you know, when I, if I have a game, I like to go in, I like to look at the box score. So here you can see the Pistons got beat. Wow, look at that. We gave it 47 points in the third quarter. I'll go through here and I'll say, okay, Cunningham, Cunningham had 24 uh, on the other team. You see Wemby, when we played Wemby, he had uh, 20 points. He had a block, uh, how he shot from the field. And you can look at the stats here. I like to look at the box scores. Uh, you know, that's why I kind of progress slowly through my my NBAs as I take my time and I look at these things and I see uh, what happened. The other thing I like to do is look at the daily view, and I go, okay, the Celtics, uh, they beat the Timberwolves. Let's Tatum had 38, pretty good game. I look for triple doubles. I look for big performances. 
you know, I go in here and okay, you know, nothing really outstanding. Well, 24 points, 15 rebounds by Sabonis. That's a pretty good night. Uh, that was the game we just looked at. The Pacers, you know, Matherin, he, he's a, one of the newer players. Look at that. Halliburton, he had a double-double, 12 points, 10 assists. And, you know, I like to, to look at those things. And from here, you can even look at the player cards and look at their social media. Uh, sometimes they'll set career highs, season highs, triple-doubles. And so I like to look at those uh, throughout uh, the season as well. Uh, you can force a win here if you need to. You can look at uh, we can look at the daily view for the G League uh, if it's going on. So uh, another thing you can do in here too is you know I, if I want to play the game, I can go in here. Let's say this is the game. I can go in. I can play the game. I can uh, uh, also have the CPU play both. I could even go over here and play as the other team. Uh, so. Um, you know, sometimes I'll let the CPU play the game, just like if it's the All-Star game and I'm not in it, you know, for whatever reason, because my team's not doing well. Maybe I just want to watch the All-Star game, so you've got that option. Um, also, if you don't want to do it, you can simulate the game. You can simulate with SimCast. Um, you can simulate with uh, SimCast Live. And this is where... You know, I don't usually use SimCast Live, but you can see here they're going to show the players uh, moving around and, uh, you know, there's the tip off so you can see, you can actually see. And so sometimes guys like to coach and this is one way that they would do that. They would go in here and uh, they would, that's how they would do it. And so, but if you do start and, you know, sometimes it'll make you sim the game, sometimes it won't. Um, uh, but anyway, those are some of the things that you can do. So sometimes when people play games, uh, they will uh, go in and they're like, okay, I'm going to play. I, I got an 82-game season. I can't play 82 games. But hey, you know what? I'm going to play against the teams in my division. I'm going to play against uh, the, you know, the big matchups. And they, they'll play every game. Uh, sometimes people will take over a team uh, they'll play SimCast, and then if they see it's a close game, uh, then they'll come in there and they'll take over and try and win the game. Here's the All-Star uh, draft uh, coming up. So you look at the All-Star draft. Uh, I don't want to be a team captain and choose, but you can draft the players that have been voted uh, to the All-Star team, to each of the teams. Here's the trade deadline. And so when the trade deadline comes up, you know, you'd want to go in and you kind of want to, you know, maybe makes, you know, see if you want to improve your team any. Uh, let's look at uh, trades here. We can go in and we can look at, um, let's look at the league news and see transactions. We can look here at trades. You can see the Nets traded Simmons uh, for Fred Van Fleet. The Heat traded Duncan Robinson for Trey Jones. So this is a way you kind of keep on top of what's going on in the league. Uh, but the trade deadline, um, you know, that's a big moment in the season. And so uh, it usually will pop up a reminder to let you know that, hey, it's a trade deadline. Do you want to make any moves? Uh, you might want to watch the All-Star game. You might want to watch the three-point contest, the dunk contest. I've done that. I've even had one of my players win the dunk contest. Here's the contract extension deadline uh, where you can make uh, extension offers to uh, your players. You know, we can go in. We can look at contract extensions. We go into contracts, contract extensions. Uh, this guy will re-sign, so uh, I can go in and I can negotiate a contract with him. And I'm not going to go in how to negotiate a contract in this video, but this is where you would do this at, and I could offer him a contract. Um, so uh, you know you don't want to miss the contract extension deadline. Uh, let me simulate through the rest of the season here. Those are the big moments, kind of during the season, uh, that you'll be looking at. Uh, so it's important to kind of manage your roster. Um, those are things you'll kind of, if you watch my fictional My League series, you'll watch me kind of manage my personnel as the season goes on because I'm actually playing all the games. And uh, those are really nice uh, um, addition. You know, those are things that are good to know. Like if somebody gets hurt, how I put somebody in uh, to replace them. Um, when do I rest somebody? Those are all things that, that come up that, you know, when you're playing, and you're simming all the time, people just kind of blow right past all of that stuff. Now, at the end of the season, <coughs> excuse me, you'll have awards here. Uh, you can see that this was uh, the Sixth Man of the Year award. Uh, you've got uh, 
The defensive player of the year was Giannis. Most improved player, Paul Reed. Giannis was the clutch, clutch player of the year. Nick Nurse was the coach of the year, the executive of the year, and MB was the most valuable player. And then you'll advance, and you can see who was on the all NBA teams and the rookie teams. Let's see, he probably Wemby made the rookie first team. Yep, there he is, along with Chet Holmgren and Scoot Henderson and so on. And then you could advance to the playoffs. Now you got the play-in games uh, all the way to the playoffs. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll simulate just a round at a time. So I'll simulate the play-in, and then I'll simulate uh, maybe. Um, you know, I'll simulate, I'll do simulate round, and I'll see what happens. So the Pistons got eliminated. We did make the playoffs there. So let's have a look. Uh, we lost, uh, we got swept. I can look at the box scores here. I can see how Young did. I can see, oh, it looks like Cunningham isn't here. Cunningham must have got hurt. So if I go in and I look at uh, my roster here, there's Cunningham. He got hurt. Let's see what's going on with him, see why he got hurt. There he is. And he had a concussion. He was out for the season. So we lost our best player in the playoffs. But I like to send through uh, the playoffs if I'm not playing the games. And you can see here, uh, most valuable player in the Western Conference was Lillard and Donovan Mitchell in the East. And then you can advance to the finals and simulate uh you can do it through a game. You can do it through a round. I'm going to go ahead and simulate the playoffs. And the Cavs won the championship. Darius Garland, most valuable player. And then you can override it if you want. If you don't like who they named, you can always name whoever you want. And then that finishes the season. You've got the social media up here you can look at. you got the team status. You see the Pistons didn't do bad last year. You know, for being really bad last year, they're 48-34 and 34 on the season for not making any moves. That's pretty good record uh, improvement there. They improved by, what, 33 games or 30 games or so. So uh, then you can advance to the offseason. Now, the offseason, this is where a lot of the action is. This is where a lot of people um, really spend a lot of time uh, focusing on their my MBAs. Now, the reason that is is because, you know, it's boring playing games after a while, and people are more interested in just making moves uh, but you go into player retirement, you can see LeBron retired. Uh, if I want to override him, I can unretire him if I want. Chris Paul retired. Uh, Mike Conley retired. Fellow Hoosier. Uh, Kevin Love retired. A lot of guys retired. So you can see who retired. Hall of Fame inductees. So uh, you can see LeBron. He made the Hall of Fame. Uh, Chris Paul and Westbrook. Westbrook got into the Hall of Fame. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, jersey retirements, you can see whose jersey was retired. Westbrook had his retired. Um, LeBron James, he had it with the Heat. He also had it with the Cavs, also had it retired with uh, the Lakers. So uh, just little simple things like that. You got the league meetings. Uh, the league meetings, you can change rules here. Typically, I turn rules on. I look at the rules. Um, and it says the salary cap will not change for the upcoming season. Well, that's good. Well, that's approved. I'm okay with that. And then you can see how long before the new collective bargaining agreement to the new TV deal. Um, and so a lot of times I don't change the rules personally because I'm a pretty traditional guy when it comes to my MBAs. I'm not going to change the shot clock to 45 seconds or anything like that. And then comes the lottery. And so you can see who's going to win the lottery. And the Pistons are not in the lottery, so I, I don't have anything here. But we can see you know, who's going to have the pick. The Pistons, do I have a pick here? in uh, this upcoming draft. You know, we talked about it earlier. I don't think that they do. So anyway, that's the draft lottery. Then you got your staff signing, and you can go in and sign your staff. Um, you know, you can send through this if you want to, too. A lot of times people do that. Again, you can see my assistant GM is open. I do have some other uh, positions that are open uh, that I can uh, I can fill as well. Here, you know, my coaching staff, my coach is still under contract there, so I'm probably not going to replace him. He did a really good job this year, but I don't have a shot doctor. So those are things that I can work to fill. Uh, then we've got the draft combine. Uh, the draft combine, you go in, you can see how everybody performed in the combine. Um, and then uh, pre-draft workouts, you can have people come in for pre-draft workouts, see how they performed. And uh, so... 
but the big deal here is uh, the NBA draft. We can go through and we can see who, uh, you know, is, um, you know, who's going to get picked in the draft. I'm trying to figure out how to how to send the whole draft here. Can't figure out how to get through it all. So let me see. Enable, pause draft, and then I can send to the end uh, right here. You can scout for players. You can propose trades. Um, you can look at the draft summary. So here I'll go ahead and send to the end, and then it'll tell you that the draft is done, and then you can see who who picked who. So the Spurs had the, had the number one pick in the draft here, so they got another top player. Um, you got the rookie signing. Um, you know, you can approve these. Uh, I don't know if it's still here or not, but uh, the second round picks a lot of times don't sign, and you might need to go in and, you know, make sure those guys sign manually. Uh, that's been an issue for a while. Team and player options. This is where you can find out, okay, Ivy, we've, we've got... Um, the two-year team options, we're going to accept both those. We had a good season. We're going to continue to keep those guys. You can look at other players around the league, like uh, Ananobi. He declined his uh, player option. LeBron James just flat out retired. He had a player option. You might remember that, too. Uh, then you've got qualifying offers. Uh, so re restricted free agents can get made offers that you can, that you can match. Um, and so this is an area that you want to pay attention to. And uh, we may we'll go into another video. You got for the free agency period here, and you got the moratorium. You know, here's where you can go in and see who's free agents. You know, Paul George uh, is kind of uh, one of the top players there. Leonard's probably number one. Paul George is number two. And so um, I'm not going to go into how free agency works here. Other than say, you know, this is the off season, and then this is when you would go to free agency. Now, player progression is next. And depending on how your players did during the season and the settings and, um, you know, there's a, a qualifying offer that was accepted, um, you know, this will determine how your players progress. So you can see Cunningham had a pretty good year. You can see what increased his uh, three-point rating went from B to A. So he's, he's improved his three-point shooting. He's a much better playmaker now. Uh, and so these are really nice progressions uh, for him. And then if you want, you can go in, you can play the summer league, and uh, you can fill out your own roster. You can kind of set up your own rules, who's going to be on the team, who's not. You can fill it out automatically. I'm going to sim through there. You can choose who's going to be in the all-star, you know, where the all-star team is going to be, the all-star game is going to be, which I think it's in Indianapolis uh, this upcoming season. And here you can see it's going to be in uh, Florida. I can change the city if I want. Uh, which is a nice feature. You got the Hoop Summit, which is the top high school and college prospects, and then you can advance to the next season. So then you advance to the next season, and you can auto-generate your rookies, and then it'll take you to the beginning of the season, and you kind of start the process over. Now, in this case, we're trying to rebuild the Detroit Pistons, so uh, we had a pretty good season. You know, if we look at last year's... Uh, Standings, like we go to stats and standings, last year's standings in the East, uh, you know, we finished with the fourth, we got home court in the first round, and we got beat. So this year, you know, we're going to want to decide, hey, what can we do for the upcoming season to improve upon last year? And part of that's, you know, by drafting and free agency and, and just, you know, players progressing. So that's an overview of my NBA. Let me know down in the comments. If there's anything about my MBA that you need help with, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you've watched it through the end, I appreciate it. Uh, be sure and subscribe and like the video and follow me over on Twitter at the Coach 2K. Uh, all right, I am Coach 2K. I'll see you guys on the court in the next video. Thanks for watching.